The children you're going to meet this morning are caught in the middle of a brutal man-made disaster that much of the world has heard very little about. About the size of Texas, the Central African Republic has some of the richest deposits of natural resources in the world. Gold, diamonds, uranium. But the ongoing civil war there has left its children among the poorest and hungriest. As we discovered on our recent journey, there is a way for all of us to help save lives. The Central African Republic is in shambles, the result of a brutal civil war that's killed tens of thousands of people. This is the first time in five years a U.S. television network has gone in. It requires heavily armed guards, as the fighting between Muslim rebels and Christian militias for control of this mineral-rich nation still rages throughout nearly 80% of the country. We have this line of vehicles here. Two of them are armored. We are going with blue helmets, uh, guys with the guns. Looking through the bulletproof glass, a precaution the people who live here do not have, it's obvious not everyone is happy to see us. Except for a war zone, this is as dangerous as the assignment gets. Yes. You know, this is just the reality of life here. Carol Stern, the CEO of UNICEF USA, says the lawlessness and violence are fueling a massive humanitarian crisis that is only getting worse. One and a half million children are at risk of starvation. Where is the world? How are we letting this happen? The danger has driven some aid groups out of the country. 396 attacks on humanitarian workers here just last year. The Jeep that we've been driving around in, there's a bullet hole in the window. It's a very scary place. The young children here have never known peace. This is the most dangerous place in the world for children. Harder than Syria? The most dangerous because the conflict and the violence here prevent supplies from getting through. They prevent people from having any kind of normalcy to their life. There is an alarming rate of malnutrition in the country as a result. The UN ranks the Central African Republic the worst country in the world when it comes to hunger. Two of every three children in this country are in need of humanitarian assistance right now. In Bangui, the country's capital, she takes us to meet some of those children. We are in the only pediatric hospital in the country. I mean, not just in Bangui, but in the country. It's where we meet the head nurse, Anne Yajobe, here for more than 25 years. How many ambulances do you have? One? One. Oh. How many children? We have 300 beds, but depending on the time of year, we can have two, two or three kids per bed. Two or three children per bed? Mm -hmm. Many of them have lost parents. They get lost from their families in the midst. Their whole security has been undermined. Bonjour. Mm -hmm. Colette is one of those orphans. This seven-year-old weighs how much? She weighs 14 kilos, which is like 28 pounds roughly, and she's seven years old. You're worried. We meet Vincent, a one-and-a-half-year-old who is so malnourished he can no longer eat. Because the child's stomach is now shutting down. No intervention, you will lose this child. Six-year-old Majoli, so tiny for her age, is also running out of time. We look at uh, the color of their hair, which changes with, with severe malnutrition. It turns a more orangey color. Do you ever turn a child away? Est-ce que ça vous arrive de renvoyer des enfants? Non. There is nowhere else to go. The ultimate irony, beneath the ground here in the heart of Africa, where so many have so little, lies a wealth of riches. Underneath this ground, diamonds, gold, I mean, they're living on a treasure trove that they will never benefit from. The most dangerous place for children, and yet, here it is. It doesn't right have to be. It. it doesn't it have, have to, to be. be. It doesn't have to be. We climb aboard a small UN plane. Our only way to the front lines is the few roads here are too dangerous. 14 different warlords control most of the country. They were flying up to Kanga Bando over here. We were originally going to go over here, but we've been advised it's not safe for us to be there today, so we're going to go up here instead. We touch down on a dirt runway surrounded by a makeshift camp. In the past few years, over a million people have had to flee their homes. Apparently, this village grew up in six hours. 20,000 people, a cluster here. And they tried to figure out a place where they would be safest in the airstrip. That's the most security in the area. 
This woman tells us she and her children ran for their lives when rebels attacked their village. What did you bring with you? They couldn't take anything, only the clothes they had. No, yes, nothing. Yes. Nothing. The factions don't attack each other. They attack citizens, civilians. Families are afraid to go out of their homes. They're afraid to send a child to school. And afraid to farm the land. No one and nothing is safe here. If we leave the plane unguarded, we may not have a plane to come back to. And we learn this place has been given a disturbing name. The nickname is the Death Triangle. That's how security described it to us. We are going with security, and yet we're still supposed to check in every 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes, and we will. But even in a place called the Death Triangle, there is reason for hope. At this outdoor clinic, we witness what Stern tells us is a life-saving miracle in a small packet. So these are about under 50 cents. Under 50 cents a piece, and this really is, this is life or death. It's called plumpy nut, a paste that tastes like peanut butter but is filled with a day's worth of nutrients. All of these women are feeding their babies plumpy nut. You can see these two little twins here are <laughs> loving this. And what's good, as you can see, is no refrigeration. Things that were created in the past were powders. They needed to be mixed with water when you couldn't find water. It had to be easy. No preparation. Mom just rips it open. The babies can feed themselves. As you can see, they're thoroughly enjoying this. Nearby, an unexpected sight. In a country where almost no one feels safe, children singing playing a traditional tribal game based on trust. You prepare yourself for the pain and the, and the horror, but boy, there's no preparation for the joy. This is what they do have. They have each other. UNICEF has not been able to raise the money that you want to raise for the Central African Republic. So the overall budget last year, $56.5 million was needed and less than half of that was raised. So what happens if you can't raise the money? What happens to the people here? Children die. That's, that's the answer. UNICEF will stretch and do as much as it can in every corner of this country, but we can only do what we are funded to do. Hello, Vincent. But look at what that money is doing. Remember those kids we met a few days ago? Stern and her team show us that tender care and plumpy nut can make a world of difference. Much better. Little Vincent, now healthy enough to sit up on his own. His mother's doing better, too. <laughs> and look at Ma Jolie, the girl who stared silently and couldn't eat. She's sitting up, she's got strength, she's got sparkle to her, and she's eating by herself, not being forced to eat. So she has an appetite. These kids would die if, if you, this hospital, UNICEF, wasn't here. What on all those stuff? In the morning when we have the staff meeting and they tell us no baby died overnight. Allah. Thank God. Without the plumping nut, the doctor tells us these kids wouldn't make it. No, they wouldn't make it. This is giving them really a full day's nutrition. And a chance at a life. A complete chance at a life that wouldn't be there without it. Wow. And this is it. This is a little packet of Plumpy Nut that does its job so well and costs under 50 cents. Can we see them? Yeah, yeah. You had Some people want to help. Yeah. What do they do? Yeah. Uh, you can go to our website at today.com. It links to UNICEF if you want to help. And I know people are generous and I know people will. There were so many, so many profound moments in there, but when you said you prepare yourself for the pain, but the joy is what gets you. I mean, and watching how just the smallest thing healed those children that you saw in the beginning. I it, mean, it really is true, though, you know, to see the joy that these kids can find in the most difficult of circumstances and to see some of the adults who are suffering so much themselves, you know, create these little classrooms where they're working with the kids. I mean... I know all of you have been in these kinds of yeah. places. The joy is what gets mm -hmm. me every time. It's hard to get your head around two out of three kids yeah. needing yeah. humanitarian assistance. Yeah. But UNICEF follow. feels like 
if you know people i know I, we have Watch. such generous yeah. viewers people are going to like be right online wanting yeah. to help at 50 cents for a pack and it can yeah. bring the light back to a child's eyes yeah. and, and literally That's revive them yeah. are they going to be able to get it there because yeah. of all the, the this terrible civil war well you know they're determined and they are very present there now and they are willing to take the risk these are the kinds of assignments where the aid workers go in and you, you can't bring your families yeah. you go in you sacrifice you do it unicef and other ngos are very much present in the country but as i say in the piece, nearly 400 attacks on aid workers last year. Three journalists murdered last summer. I mean, it, the, the three Russian journalists who had gone wow. in to try to tell the story. I mean, aid workers and journalists are targets. The people who are trying to do the bad stuff don't want foreign eyes in. Sure. Wow. They're doing God's work over there. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks Thank for bringing you. that to us. Thank you for giving Thanks. us the time to tell Thank the story. You. Yeah, and Cynthia's wow. going to have much more reporting tonight on Nightly News with Lester Holt. And if you want to help, today.com, we put the information up. Yeah.